try out this watercolor tree silhouette artwork. It is such a great way to learn how to mix colors and gain confidence with watercolor painting. Seriously, it could not be more easy. For this artwork, you just need a pan of watercolors. I'm using the cheap set of Prang I have in my classroom and quality paper is key. So make sure you're using water media paper or watercolor paper for best results. If you love learning about art, hit that subscribe button so you never miss a weekly art tutorial. When I have time to create my personal art, I love painting landscapes and trees have been a subject matter that I've always been drawn to. Maybe it's growing up living in the woods, maybe it's just their majestic form, but trees make a powerful subject. So to start your tree artwork, I want you to think about your background sky. I'm inspired by my morning commute. I'm a teacher, so I'm always leaving the house early and I live in Oklahoma. Oklahoma has the most beautiful sunrises and sunsets. I grew up in South Carolina. Um, I've seen beautiful sunsets and sunrises there on the coast. Sorry, Oklahoma wins as far as best sunsets. So I'm really thinking about the rainbow, Roy G. Biv, and I'm trying to use colors that blend together. So if I were to mix yellow with that blue, it's gonna turn into green. So you can use whatever colors you want, just be mindful of how they're blending together because you are creating washes. A wash is a thin layer of watercolor diluted with water that covers a large surface. Washes make a great foundation for a painting and you see how my colors are blending and making new colors as they interact. You should use a large brush when creating your washes in your background. If you use a small brush, it's gonna be very frustrating because you're trying to cover your whole surface. So when selecting a brush, think big brush for big areas, small brush for small details. I started with the flat brush, but I went back to my trusty round brush with the point. I just love how it holds so much water and I feel like I have more control with it. So you can use a flat brush or round brush, Make sure you're using a water-based media brush with really soft bristles, and I'm adding more water as I go down. So you can see that it's a lot of water. In the term watercolor, water comes first. So as long as you're using quality paper, like I talked about in the beginning, it will be able to withstand and hold all the water you're adding. Look how that yellow and orange just blends together. And I like to give the water control here. So I don't really know what it's gonna look like because I'm randomly adding color to water that has a mind of its own. You will notice that I taped my edges. So that is a good step for this style of painting because you're adding so much water, your paper will curl. If you don't have tape, that's fine too. Just use your hand to control the way the paper curls and know when it dries, you can flatten it back out. Like I said, you can add layers here and I wanted my magenta and my violet to be a little more vibrant, so I'm adding a second layer so those colors are as popping as the bottom of the painting. Now it's time to let your background dry. This is the perfect opportunity to make multiples. If you had more than one piece of paper, what other color schemes and textures could you experiment with? Another landscape painter that really inspires me is artist Ying Li. She is an American painter that focuses on painting outdoors and making the atmosphere and environment of the painting feel the way it would be if you were standing outside. Georgia O'Keeffe is an all-time favorite of mine and I love how she uses the trees to frame the background. And I am always inspired by her sense of color. This one especially just really speaks to me. If you're looking for a more abstract interpretation, Gustav Klimt's The Tree of Life might be the most famous tree painting of all time. Obviously, the gold color and the swirly branches aren't based on reality, but it sure is fun to look at. Once your background is dry, it's time to sketch your tree. My background's still a little wet, so if you wonder why I'm holding my pencil awkwardly, it's so I don't put my palm in the wet paint. Um, but it's dry enough that I know my paint won't bleed and it's fine for my pencil. So start by sketching a central point with branches that extend. You could Google tree silhouette and pick some images that inspire you. Or if you're lucky to have a tree out your window like me, look out the window and draw it from observation. You don't have to draw exactly what you see, just notice how the branches interact and notice how there's a larger trunk with at least three or four branches that extend from it. You could practice this in a sketchbook before drawing on your paper, but I do recommend using a pencil to sketch first. Like I said, my paper's a little damp, so I'm blotting the edges with the paper towel to make sure my paint doesn't bleed. I really like the effect, it's almost like clouds. <laughs> almost knocked over my cup of water there, so be careful. Notice I'm using a smaller brush with a point. That is key when painting branches. 
And I'm holding my brush awkwardly again because I don't want to stick my palm in the wet paint of the branches and the background. I'm starting by doing the trunk and I did mine a little bit off center on purpose. So you plan out the way you would like your tree to look. I'm making my tree pretty skinny, much skinnier than the tree out my window. I can always add more paint to make it thicker, but once I make my lines thick, ooh, there's no going back. If this is scary for you, I recommend taking your paintbrush and in a sketchbook or a scratch piece of paper, practice brush strokes and controlling how thick or thin your lines are. I'm gonna paint my thickest branches first, and then I'll go back in and freehand some smaller branches that interact. This is your painting. You could keep it super simple, or you could go really complex. Oklahoma, we've had a hard year. Our trees have really gone through it. We had a ice storm in October that was historic and just destroyed our trees. And now I'm sitting here in minus 15 degree temperatures. Yes, you heard me, negative 15 degree wind chill in Oklahoma. Our trees have been through it. So my tree is a little daintier and cleaner than the tree I'm looking out outside. This one has broken branches and jagged branches. So at this point, I would say, what inspires you? Dutch artist Mondrian was a rule breaker and very interested in natural, harmonious forms. So he really loved the structure of trees because it had so much beauty and also so much chaos. So if you're interested in more chaos, add as many lines as you would like. It doesn't have to be realistic, but certainly look at how branches tend to extend from big to small, which really does create a natural sense of harmony, unity, and organization. Or I'm looking at the sad tree out my window with all of its broken branches. I always wondered why trees look like this in Oklahoma, like they've really been through it. And I'm like, have these all been destroyed by tornadoes? And then I just realized how harsh the weather can be in this climate. So it just depends on what you're going for. What's the mood of your painting? What trees inspire you? Are you a keep it simple type of person? Or are you gonna cover this paper with branch after branch after branch? One thing I also love is if you look at a tree and you just look through the branches, it creates almost like a stained glass or a mosaic effect. So you can zoom in as much as you would like and make your branches thicker and go as abstract as you would like. You could also play around with how light or dark your branches are. I'm controlling my water so that all of my branches are a silhouette, just like what I see in the morning on my drive to work with the sun um, making that silhouette with the tree. But you could use less water to make it really black. You could use more water to make it more gray, and you could have a variety of values in your tree. If using a paintbrush intimidates you, you could also do this step with colored pencils or even a Sharpie. You could make it a Zentangle or you could Google Klimt's Golden Phase. I'll put the text here because that's a mouthful. If you want to use a gold Sharpie, imagine how beautiful that would look cutting through your background. So this is just the approach I'm using, but the beauty of a artwork like this is so simple. It's great for building confidence and building baseline skills, but it gives such a great opportunity to experiment and also push your own creativity. My personal struggle is always knowing when to stop and overworking my art. So I'm gonna simply end things by making my trunk and the branches closest to it a little bit thicker and then just walking away. So I'm going to call it done. I'm gonna move my supplies out of the way. This is the most satisfying part of watercolor painting. If you use tape, is peeling the tape back. Now, if your paper is wet, wait to do this step. And do you see how crooked my tape is? So if you're gonna use tape, make sure you don't put it on crooked like me. And then removing the tape provides this just like really satisfying white border all the way around the edges of your painting. I highly recommend using tape when you doing watercolor painting simply for the satisfaction of removing it at the end. Well, here it is. Thanks so much for sticking around and making art with me. And if you're interested in more tutorials, check these out. Also, I post student examples on my Instagram at thatartteacher underscore Machado. And check out my website, thatartteacher.com, for full-length lesson plans.